In this video, we're gonna be exploring how to get the most out of consultations when you are on a fatigue recovery journey. Maybe you're suffering from ME, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, long COVID, Lyme disease, co-infections, and so on. And in which case, your consultations with practitioners are super important. They're, of course, where you're figuring out the next steps in your healing journey, but also the times where we most need to feel resourceful and that we have access to our best inner resources. We can feel overwhelmed, anxious, and like we're not getting what we need. And so I thought it'd be helpful to walk through a little bit of a checklist to help you support yourself when you're working with either practitioners here at the Optimum Health Clinic or working with your general medical practitioner or working with really any practitioner where you need to maximize what you get from that time. So number one, and I know this is much easier said than done, but you need to do the best you can to relax. When our nervous system is dysregulated, we often misread situations. The research shows that we often have a less accurate memory of situations when our system is dysregulated. We see problems where there may not be problems. We see disagreement where there may not be disagreement. But also we end up burning a lot of our energy sustaining that stress response. And so if you already have tools to help you to regulate your nervous system, I really encourage you to use those in preparation of consultations, particularly if you're having the consultation from home, trying to pick a time of day where you may be at your, at your comparative best, where you can have some rest beforehand, but set yourself up the best you can for success. This comes to my second point, prepare. If you know that you've got questions, write them down. If you know that you tend to forget key things in the moment, then again, write them down. It might be you even want to write down a little script of what you need to say at the beginning to summarize how you've been doing since the last appointment or what you're looking to get from this particular appointment. But take the time to prepare in advance so you don't get in the appointment and then your mind memory fails you and then you feel like you're not getting the maximum benefit. Number three, and this is a really important one. You need to talk and you also need to listen. Now, I know that sounds super patronizing and that's not my intention, but there are some folks that come into appointments and because their nervous system is so dysregulated, they're talking sort of, you know, 100 miles an hour and sort of talking at the practitioner and then get to the end of the session and still have a thousand more things to say but the practitioner's not actually had a chance to ask the questions they need to ask because the things that are in our head aren't always the things that are actually most important for a practitioner to make the clinical choices that they need to make. But we also need to make sure that we do communicate where we are. There are other people that go into appointments and they almost feel like they're in a sort of parent-child relationship and they need to have permission to even say what they need to say and they come out having not said the things that are most important. So there's a real balancing act here. We want to feel as empowered as we can, to recognize that the practitioner is there to help us. They shouldn't be judging us. They shouldn't be overriding where we are with their narratives and stories. It should be a collaborative relationship. And if that isn't what it feels like, we may need to consider whether that practitioner is the right person to help and support us. So we need to not, as a client, try and constantly dominate the conversation, but we do need to make sure that the important things are said and communicated. I can't overstate the number of times over the years that I've asked a client a question like, is there anything else that I need to know? And they'll then come out with the most important piece of information that I might not otherwise have got. And so it is a real balancing act that you don't want to hijack the session with just talking, but you need to make sure that the key pieces of information are there. And that's why the previous two points are helpful to have a well-regulated, the best you can nervous system and to prepare and plan for the session. 
Number four, I really encourage you to make notes during the consultation. If there are key things that the practitioner says that you know you're not necessarily going to remember, write them down. Even if it's not whole sentences, it might just be key words. Like it may be the name of a particular test. It may be a particular book recommendation. But I don't know about you, but I know of my own brain that I can be in a super interesting conversation and I can think I'm going to remember something and then I get out of the conversation and I can't remember it for the life of me. And it's happened enough times now that when I'm in a conversation that's really important, I want to remember something, I'll just pull out my phone and write it in the notes on my phone, a couple of key words or things that are going to remind me. Now, Hopefully, what your practitioner is going to be doing is they're going to be sending, if there are any kind of supplement recommendations or, or medicines or so on, then they should be following up with that all very clearly and carefully laid out. But there's a lot of other things that may be sort of passing recommendations that you want to make sure you have a way of capturing them. Number five, this is something that I found super helpful as a practitioner, but I've also found it super helpful as a client over the years. It's a super simple principle. It's something that we use in nearly all of our internal business meetings. Summarize the key action points at the end. So as a practitioner, I will typically say at the end of a consultation, okay, so let's summarize the things that we've agreed are going to happen between now and next time. If your practitioner is not the one driving that, I'd really encourage you to do that. At the end to say, so can I just make sure I've understood what we've talked about? I need to go and do A, B, C. You're going to do X, Y, Z. And then you have that clarity. Again, as a client, I would write that down. If I went away and I had any kind of hesitation that I might have mis miswritten it down or misunderstood, I might even email the practitioner and say, I just wanted to confirm that I've got a correct recollection of the things that we agreed were going to happen. Because if we don't have defined action points, the risk is those things get missed off at some point. The way I really encourage you to think about this, you need to become the captain of the ship of your own healing journey. It doesn't mean that you need to be the expert in every piece of it. You need to have specialist practitioners to support you. And you are going to be the piece that joins up all of those other pieces the more you can support yourself in the process, the better. Do let me know in the comments below this video what helps you get the most out of your consultations. And do also check out my book, Decode Your Fatigue, where you can learn a clinically proven roadmap to not just decode your fatigue, what's happening, why it's happening, but also you can create your own healing roadmap to support your journey to recovery. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.